I will share, being homeless has been a challenge of mine in the past that I had to overcome. Talk about full embarrassment, but what did I learn out of that humility and the value of the dollar and, you know, you never judge a book by its cover, you know, none of that. Uh, and that's all played heavily into my role today. And, and I'm so blessed to where I'm at. It's through the tragedy uh, that we really learn. And as, I don't know, as cheesy or as uh, woo woo as that may sound, uh, it really is the case. Like it's our biggest challenges that we overcome make us into almost like a new person, almost, so to speak. Welcome to Bold Breakthroughs. Today I'm going to give you a rebroadcast of an interview of me by Jamie J, the host of Bottleneck Podcast. The reason I want to do so is because Jamie J was actually homeless before becoming a great business success. So he's the epitome of getting stuck and creating a breakthrough in his work and his life for sure. Enjoy this rebroadcast of my episode on his show as he interviews me about how to create a breakthrough in your work and your life. In a minute, Jamie J. Welcome to Bold Breakthroughs that unstick work and life. I'm Mark Cook, New York Times bestselling innovator. Each week I offer keynotes that engage thousands, and teams embed me weekly to unstick tech pivots, sales prospects, and ops constraints. We roll up our sleeves in small groups to create breakthroughs on top priorities for each individual in person or via Zoom. Nine global studies of over two million successes fueled my 4,000 wins at top brands. I've shared rapid innovation in over 50 cities worldwide. Teams create revenue breakthroughs and clients see new profits. Thank you for listening and inspiring your breakthrough today. Hello, welcome back. 2022, it's Jamie J. Live with Bottleneck, host of Live with Bottleneck. We're excited uh, to jump into this new year. Uh, it's been a while, been a couple weeks that we've had off. Uh, I don't know what you've done. No, just kidding. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun today. I'm talking with Mark S. Cook, uh, and we're going to be talking about some pretty incredible things because we have a lot of alignment coming up. So uh, let's get this show started. <laughs> Welcome to uh, this great first edition of 2022. As of the time of this recording, maybe watching it uh, evergreened at a later time, but this is my first uh, episode in the new year, and I couldn't be prouder of uh, welcoming our guest, Mark S. Cook. We're going to be talking about breakthroughs, unstick priorities with rapid innovation. He's the owner of Windfall Partners, but he's also the host of Bold Breakthroughs, and uh, it's a, a, a relatively new podcast that's coming out. I uh, can't wait to share a little bit more about that with Mark S. Cook, and I want to be particular about the S because uh, apparently there's a lot of Mark Cooks out there, but none like this Mark Cook, <laughs> where he's a New York Times best-selling innovator, and Mark has spoken to an embedded in 4,000 sales ITs and, and ops teams to unstick priorities and create breakthroughs. After earning a master's in business, Mark led nine global studies on award-winning work. He's led and turnaround CEO, executive of sales and marketing, and a co-founder of C7's tech exit of $123 million. That's uh, no small amount. Mark's passion for work stems from his early uh, mentor, Stephen Covey. And Mark is the father of five sons with his wife, Annika. So without any further ado, please allow me to welcome uh, Mr. Mark S. Cook. How are you, sir? Great, Jamie. Appreciate being on, especially at the first of the year. It's perfect for both our messages, isn't it? Oh, it's it's fantastic. Did you have a nice holiday? Oh, a great holiday. I happen to be from Salt Lake City, Utah. We're the only Western team in the United States that had a chance in football. I went to the Rose Bowl. My heart was broken nine seconds in the end, but I'm okay. Uh, I got to interview the coach and all the player, a lot of the players and a lot of the people that have been followed. He's a tremendous leader, this coach Whittingham. He's been there nearly two decades. He's won more than anyone in his circumstances. He's got a process. If we're talking about process, he's one of my, he's actually two of my episodes on my bold breakthroughs. He, he gives me the strategic message, how to lead millennials. 
uh, it's re he's he's really phenomenal. So that's what that was my highlight. I, I went to the warm Pasadena and enjoyed the sun. So great football game. Oh my gosh, that must have been a blast. Yeah. So I we've only been through uh, your neck of the woods, my wife and I, uh, one time driving through, and we couldn't believe how spectacular and beautiful. Yeah, you don't want to let the secret out. We're still small. I've lived in Sweden. I lived in D.C. Uh, I love this place. It's a great place. Oh, it's gorgeous. So so what gave you the idea? Actually, I want to go back a little bit. Maybe you can give us a little bit more background of who you are and what you've been up to that led you up to this bold breakthroughs. Sure. Uh, I grew up in undergraduate and graduate school working for Franklin Covey. And uh, it was a merger between two types of companies that were similar, but two different companies, Franklin Quest and, and the Covey organization. And I was on the I was on the Franklin side. I don't know if you remember those day planners, but everyone before the smartphone had to have a day planner. And we were the kings. And then we taught time management and leadership. We worked with Covey. And uh, that was a difficult merger because it was like trying to merge two different religions. It was tough. And and my my side uh, was was having me do some really interesting projects that were kind of high profile projects. And the Cubbies said, we want him. So they threw me over the Cubbies and uh, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I have a hard time not worshiping Stephen R. Covey, who's now deceased. And also I worked for his son and with his other son and they, they are the highest quality people that do what they write about. It's unbelievable. It's really unbelievable how they stick their necks out for little guys like me. So that's how I got this bug. And uh, I've been a turnaround CEO. I've been a marketing executive and a sales executive. Uh, sadly, I'm a little old. So I, I've done those things. And uh, I got to tell you, I, I never got rid of the bug of helping people with ideas. You know, you you go into a group, you share a process that's based on research, and you hear someone on the side say, gosh, I think this saved my career. And those are more fulfilling than really someone who says, I, I just made $7 million in our sessions today and this week. And I, I just, you know, the money's great. And obviously business is about profit and growth. But the, the bug that got me were the people that said that, they, they had their job saved or their career turned around, or I just had an IT leader get promoted that his boss had been uh, overlooked and moved to a different company. And he's in a multi-billion dollar company. So it was difficult. And at the end of our sessions, he got promoted. Those are really why I do this and how I got into this. Uh, and every executive position I've taken I've, I've asked gently during the transaction of the, the hiring, do I get a research budget? Can I study leadership and work results? And if I don't hear yes, I never took it throughout my career. So at this point, I've done that, you know, over just a few employers that are big. I've done it nine times and then I've done my own study as part of those nine since a few years ago going on my own. That's how I got here. It's a it's a long story, but uh, it's, that's why I'm doing what I do. I just love helping people with ideas and a process. I love it. In in fact, I would almost consider that a bold breakthrough. It is put yourself because that that it, it may may not have to you. For me, it would seem very hard to ask. That's a big ask, uh, especially <laughs> in the beginning of a relationship. Oh, that's a big ask. I got I got recruited by Sun Microsystems. They said no. But, you know, I'm glad I didn't end up going there anyway. So, yeah. that was young. you know, all of those requests happened young in my career. And uh, I, I'm thrilled with how it's gone. The only the only part that's difficult, interestingly, not to not to cast a shadow on the show. But a few years ago, I got a spine infection that was about 26 percent mortality. And then it went septic. And because it, there was a delay in, in getting care for various reasons i almost kicked the bucket and that's really what launched this independent work i had to be on my back for four months and i could either at the i could just wait for healing 
where I could sit there on my laptop independently, reconstitute what I'd been doing, make it my own, do more research. And that's how I've gone out on my own as I, I healed from that. I, I got up the very last day of that healing cycle and stood in front of a large accounting group of all people, teaching them innovation and how to quickly turn around these bottlenecks in their process. And so it was an interesting day, I'll tell you. There's a lot more details to spare you. That's, that's why I'm here. That's what I do what I do. You know, thank you for sharing that. And what a wonderful story. Uh, yeah. I think it's it's through the tragedy uh, that we really learn. And as, I don't know, as cheesy or as uh, woo-woo as that may sound, uh, it really is the case. Like it's our, our biggest challenges that we overcome make us into almost like a new person almost, so to speak. And uh, for you to have uh, the bold breakthroughs that you did, uh, Mark S. Cook, uh, is, <laughs> is, is quite frankly amazing. Uh, I, I, will, I will share, being homeless has been a challenge of mine in the past that I had to overcome. Talk about full embarrassment, but what did I learn out of that humility and the value of a dollar and, you know, you never judge a book by its cover, you know, none of that. Uh, and that's all played heavily into my role today. And, and I'm so blessed to where I'm at because now I get to talk to you and other people like you and learn from you. And that's what I hope that other people get to do. Because yeah. a lot of people that are watching this, um, they may have not been homeless, but they may have been challenged. They may have not been on their back for four months, but they may have been challenged in a way that to them, maybe amounted to the same amounts of stress or unknowns or what am I going to do or how am I going to overcome this? And, and quite frankly, this is exactly why I have people just like you uh, to share your stories and, and help share or walk people through some things that they might be able to do actionable steps. A lot of time when I talk with people, we speak in generalities, um, which is fine. That's great. But it's really nice to get down to a couple of specifics like, what is something somebody they can take action to do? Because right now, systems, processes, a lot of people think that's nails on a chalkboard. Like, oh my gosh, and document every, do something as if it's the last time you're ever going to do it, right? Yeah. Document that stuff, get it down. That stuff is, oh my gosh, so taxing on the brain. But yeah. I don't know, what would you, what do you think about the importance of systems well, and processes and, yeah. and, and all of that? Critical. You know, I just, I got, I just finished talking about Coach Whittingham and his, his quote that he just ingrained in my brain that of course is the basis of my business, but it's just such a simple saying, I'll quote him, trust the process. Um, but when you need to improve the process, you need to improve the process. But in between those improvements, between the priorities, you better make sure you're doing the process. And, and each step of the process must contribute to benefit of customers and financial success, or you've got the wrong process. So he doesn't, he, he doesn't prescribe fulfilling a process that doesn't work. But there, most of the time, when, when you're not getting to success with clients and with financial systems, you're kind of kidding yourself. You're kind of in denial that some of the process is being done somewhere by someone or by yourself. And if you're honest with yourself, you know, that, that additional uh, learning for an extra three hours that day should probably be stopped at about an hour of new learning and you better pick up the phone or you better get to an office or you better drive to a client or you better look at some machinery and something must be done correctly that hasn't been done correctly. Um, I, I'll get to, I, I have a process um, that has a very specific use that goes along with what your theme is, what your audience is probably looking for. But if you'll allow me, I want to just go backwards to talk, just to react to what you just said. Um, a lot of times in some of my material, you'll see on my site, you'll see the word unstuck and you'll see the word breakthrough. And I just want to point out what you said in a really practical way. People get stuck. I have been blessed, as we've talked about, to get budget, millions of dollars to research millions of work cases. I have investigated 
and led teams of Harvard, Cambridge, and Stanford PhDs very empirically, very rigorously, the work of over 2 million people in a huge diverse set of work. And what I have learned since being independent, which I didn't ever hear at the corporations that I worked for, was that everyone gets stuck. Now you have to whisper in the halls of a big company. You can't like run around saying, uh, I, I failed on a project or my career's in a stall. I mean, you can't say those things, but I have to tell you um, having an independent ear going into other companies in massive quantities, almost every single human being has a priority or a position that they're in get absolutely stuck. And it's very discouraging. And so I just want to tell your audience from a unique perspective, from a big budget that's seen a lot of people in the workplace, you're not alone. You're going to get through this and there's a way to do it. And so, so put your chin up and do a few things and, and hold to your process if it's right. And let's get some bottlenecks unstuck or the bottleneck unstuck. And you'll be okay. Just keep going because a lot of people get us. They get stuck. So the yeah. breakthrough is what I'm about. You know, it's one thing to get unstuck and you get to mediocrity or what, how things were or things are safe or whatever. Low growth. Uh, there's a lot of ways to stall. But there's two sides to what I just described. And the second side is, okay, if, if you've been unstuck now and you've created a situation where you got through it, it's now time to create a breakthrough in results for clients, for finances. It's time for a breakthrough. So that, uh, that, that's one reaction to what you said. And I can go through your process. But does that make sense to you? Do you, you, you obviously agree with that. Absolutely. Uh, we deal with bottlenecks every single day. Uh, more specifically, you know, how to hire, how to manage things like that and, and how to transfer information, how to delegate responsibility. And in essence, that's kind of what it is. It kind of comes down it boils down to communication. And as silly as that sounds, that's basically what it is. And the other thing is I spent 12 years in corporate America, 11 years trying to figure out how to get out. Um, but I, I went to, I went to four different companies in that span. And, and what that tells me is grass is greener over here. Grass is greener over here. I can do it better. Okay, finally, somebody. Oh, and the same thing hit me. And what I found was exactly what you said. I couldn't ask for help. Um, I had to figure stuff out. Um, there was, it just, no, I don't, don't get me wrong. Corporate America is great for those that it works for. Um, for sure. They wouldn't let me grow a beard. I wanted to grow a beard. So <laughs> beard. priority. But, but when, when I went out on my own, um, one thing I did learn very well is not to burn my bridges. So my first client was the organization that I left um, and, and, and I kind of grew from there. But one of the biggest challenges that I had was it, it, it was environments and the culture. It was hard to say I messed up. And as a matter of fact, in our meetings that we have, our weekly meetings with our teams, we have a line item on our, on our agendas, by the way. Written out meeting agendas are very important <laughs> for organization and structure, but we have a line item there called missteps, not, not failures, not anything, missteps. What was our missteps? And what I found that when I first, this was brought to me by somebody else, and when I first started talking about missteps with the team involved and not being upset, not saying, oh my gosh, nobody rolling their eyes, something amazing happened. One person, made a mistake because they said, I tried to take too much on. I'm so, you know, I just made a mistake. Someone else without me saying anything at all, popped up in the room and said, you know what? I have some extra time where I can help you with that. And I've done that before. And all of a sudden they started collaborating. That problem went away. We adopted that into the foundation of the infrastructure of our system. And, 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 and that's one thing that I want to say too, and then I'll, I'll let you respond here, is that creating the foundation for a system takes time. It does take time, but it is super important. And the thing that you need to know about once a system is created, including processes, workflows, it always needs to be updated as you grow, right? Because you learn things and things change. And so that's to be expected. But with if you build a house, Right. It takes a long time to build the walls and build the roof. But if you put a hole in the wall, it doesn't take that long. You can patch it up. 
It's the same thing with the system. You take a while to build that house, that foundation. But then once you do it, you can kind of tweak the rest of the systems around. So that way, at least you have a trajectory moving forward. At least that's my thought. Do you have any insight into uh, building a proper foundation with regards to the amount of time it takes and, and the maintenance that needs to be maintained on it? No, I, I, I agree with that. I think, um, you know, my expertise isn't uh, in maintaining a current system exactly as it was. Um, that is a very essential part of business for sure. Um, my expertise through my whole career actually has been on the either, either end of that. When someone does punch a hole through the sheetrock and what do we do now? Are we just going to patch it? Or are we going to replace it with something better? That's, that's kind of what uh, my specialty has been. It's been what I call rapid innovation. I, um, one esoteric finding from another part of my research so that, that I want to share to react to what you just said, though. You know, corporate America is, can, can be very frustrating. But it's interesting since I, I have left or, you know, my, my body forced me out of it um, to some degree. I, I have looked back and I've been a leader and, and I've been an executive and I've managed a lot of people. And then I've also been a, a solo performer for, for probably every other stint I did because of my passion for research and sharing ideas with people. And uh, I, I do have a regret. You know, people love to say I have no regrets. Well, I have I have plenty of regrets. I don't I don't kill myself over them. I, I love that I've learned things about, but one of them that I look back on is I know that your audience is entrepreneurs and they wanted to get out to, or they are glad they never went in, but they are going to grow and they are going to have employees. And my client, I have a lot of clients that, that are only a hundred people big or 200 people big. And they, you know, if you're 200 employees, you have people, you're big enough to have people feeling that way about your entrepreneurial effort. So the shoe's on the other foot. And what I would say about this regret of mine is that I look back and there was some, you know, I claim to know a lot of things. There's one thing I don't know, and it's this. Why, when I was employed by someone else, did I let my mental mindset not just break out of the box and not do interesting things to me or marginal improvements, but really just shake things up with a bold breakthrough. Like we are starting a division in Brazil and I'm moving there or whatever it takes. And the reason I share that is I think what you said about leaders allowing some room for mistakes or missteps or risk or something that won't be catastrophic. Uh, is super important because their employees are going to be feeling what you just described. And they have to they have to give permission explicitly and repetitively to employees. Hey, this is your business too. Try big things that are smart. Don't try big things that are fun and stupid, but try big things that are smart. They'll further your career. Yes, they'll help, help our firm and our clients. Yes, they're helping other people. But if you succeed they will make your career a new career. So feel free, go for it. it. Just fail fast and keep in touch. Don't do it alone and in secret, but be brave. And, and I think people would enjoy corporate America if leaders allowed that and they push through the no's. So um, I, I think that's a really important message in this part of our conversation to just share that there is a place in corporate America and you are turning into corporate America. So make it amazing so that you succeed and your clients succeed, right? I love that. It's, it's such a, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty amazing when you get someone to say, hey, Jamie, someone offered me another gig today. And I was like, oh, dang, you know, I'd love working with you. I'm not, they offered me more money, but I'm not going because I love it here. You know, we have a lot of fun. We brainstorm together and we actually, we do have fun and we probably do some dumb stuff <laughs> that we probably shouldn't do, but you know, we do it as a team. And if they fail, if anything fails in the organization, it's my failure. If anything succeeds, it's the team's 
rewards because they've worked their behind off to make that happen. And so we've, we've, we've really grown together like that. And I think that's just, it's just fun, good, solid business in my, in, 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 in my, in my own mind. Um, yeah. I do have one question. You said something about where your expertise lies in when somebody punches the hole in the wall, so to speak, yeah. they hit that thing. I'm, I, and I'm talking to people that are listening right now, like, what if you made a mistake that second you made the mistake and you go, Oh crap, this didn't work. Or, Oh my gosh, we're going to lose this client or something like that. What is the best thing that you can recommend that someone does? Because this comes down to a personal yeah. Right? Yeah. relationship right there. It's, it's yeah. them. <laughs> we love to say business isn't personal, <laughs> but when you're driving home and heading to a significant other and sometimes some kids or, even a date for Friday night, you want to have something positive to talk about. You don't want to dwell And a decade goes fast and, you know, negative conversations with significant others and children and even dates is not welcome from the world. You know, we, we want it, we want success. And so it's, it's important. Um, let me tell you, I think it would be, it would be valuable in this context to just share that, they, there were nine different measures, very rigorous measure of these were actually successful results. And then we had, you know, it was a, it wasn't a set of categories. It was, it was a grade. It was a continuum. And at the bottom end were really lousy results, poor client results, poor customer results, poor customer feedback, terrible financial, you know, similar nine things. And they were all bad and red and not good. And so and then there's this huge mountain in between a mediocrity. And I've got to tell you, there's a room for mediocrity in the economy and in the world because we, our economy runs on things that are expected. We need things to happen predictably. And so there's nothing bad about the big mountain of mediocre work that happens in the middle. But every human being that lifts their arms or opens their mouth in the morning to work deserves a top priority. And if some, if there's a hole in the wall, it's your new priority. Or if there's a broken process or a bottleneck that's holding you back, it's your priority. But on the other hand, sometimes you know that there's something that would scale your business and you've been putting it off because the mundane and the predictable is comfortable. And that positive opportunity can be a, a huge priority. It is a potential loss to your business if you don't capture it. And so they can come in, you know, these things, these priorities come in bottlenecks, but they also come in opportunities that need to be attacked. And, and so those are the two types of priorities. And I use the word priority because it could be anything. It could be a project. It could be a big prospect. It could be a new marketing methodology. I've taught, for example, sales in my past. I've got two sales books. One's an Amazon number one bestseller in the category. It's a lot. It's an old one. I'm not going to push it. Don't read it. But I know a thing or two about sales and I have sales clients. I have big sales clients right now. I don't go in and teach them selling process because what they're doing is already working most of the time. The veterans will ignore it. The new people will be overwhelmed by it. The best thing you can do, even in that very different circumstance than normal business of selling is best served by rapid innovation. I say to clients, if you, the leader, don't, aren't willing to go to five places with me or by yourself and accomplish some things, this won't work. You have to find yourself in five places. And I'm going to tell you what they are. And if you don't literally find yourself in that exact setting that I describe, you're not going to make a, a breakthrough. You're not going to create anything spectacular. I know based on a lot of work and, and rigorous research. So the first step is to go to the right place. And I'll talk to you about those. The second thing is you have to do the job we came to the place to do that day. Some of them take a half hour. Some of them take a week. None of them take more than that, but they are not quite done by anyone, uh, some of these things. 
except they're always done almost always by award winners. People that win awards in their companies, like President's Award, that project was awesome. They've done three or all five of these. If someone wins an innovation award, they've done this. And, uh, and so the two sides to this, you've got to go to the right place. You've got to do the right thing. So to answer your question, finally, the first thing that I would do is I would find myself at least initially alone in a conference room or a place of solitude. And my phone is off. Now, as I describe this, there's always going to be kind of a, in the olden days, we'd watch a, you know, our, we'd catch our mom watching aerobics on the television. And, you know, there's this low impact lady barely moving. And then the middle one, there's a middle impact. And then at the top, there's this high impact fitness person. Yeah. So there's always, of these three things, you know, you better get to middle uh, impact or nothing's going to happen. So the middle impact is finding yourself alone somewhere in solitude with your phone off. And what are you doing? You're scanning through three levels of need that your potential clients or your current clients really need from you. And let me give you an example. The first level is visible and obvious. And it's what we see every day. It's what we understand. It's the, it's the obvious things. Like if I said, what does Domino Pizza do? Well, people say deliver pizza, make pizza, something involving pizza. And yet when I interview leaders at Domino's, they don't say that. They go one step beneath that. And they say, we gather friends and family. Well, that's a deep psychological need of human beings, every human being, even if you're in business. And they sell that. Think about Domino's, especially today. They just went through a pandemic. We're in the heat of a second one, practically. I mean, it's crazy out there. They have a, they have a good business to be in that, you know. They were built for this because they're not having you pick it up there. They're wired and they have your process to bring it to the home. So if I want to go watch a fight with my buddies, I don't usually watch WMA. And if they invite me over, I better have something to hold my interest. And it's company first, my friends. But if I show up and there's no food there, it's kind of weird. We all kind of expect that. Well, it turns out that if they bought Little Caesars, nothing against Little Caesars, I've fed it to my uh, my kids <laughs> for a long time when they were little. But if if he show if he brought Little Caesars after inviting me, and I walked in with Little Caesars, I, I'd say, "Come on, come on!" I go, "Am I supposed to bring my little kids or my nephews or something?" Uh, if he if he had catered the nicest Ruth's crisp meal. It would also be odd. Like, who are you trying to impress? Yeah. But if he has a, a spread of various Domino's items and various flavors of pizza, it would seem about right. And they're not poor. Domino's has all the money in the world to create the very best food like Cruz Chris. If any of us were to claim that Domino's couldn't create a great steak like Cruz Chris, we'd be kidding ourselves with all that money and talent they have. But that's not what they're for. They're for helping you gather with friends and family in your home. So they understand that second level. The third level is what is in the way. And, and, and it's the either the malevolence or the roadblock or the obstacle that is be, in people's way of getting that. And so if you can determine all three levels, and I have a process to take people through all three levels to really figure out what they do. So in this solitude, in their office, in the break room, at the park, in their car, wherever they have an hour, if they're going through the 12 fundamental needs of human beings and they're looking down the list of synonyms of about 50 each, those types of things that we like and love in life, and they find themselves, they might find one to three words that really nails the underlying invisible human need that they actually sell. And they get around that and then they bring that up to the top level and use it to help describe the benefit of what the visible provides. 
and then they treat the enemy like the enemy and tell their customers that they can overcome that enemy. They've really figured out how to do that. Now that sounds like a business and it's, and it is, but let me just point out something subtle, a connection that leaders in middle management or below these entrepreneurs that are listening often miss that kind of thinking and analysis that, that being alone and digging deep in the mind of the customer for essential needs. People that don't face customers think they don't have to do that. And they are wrong. Mm. People in the middle of a company, even if it's small, they miss the point that their internal client, the people that take their work and do something else with it so that way down the line, the clients can benefit. They never, they never even consider selflessly those people that are downstream, they just say, what do you need? And they do it. Or they listen to the boss. We need to provide this. But if they really hunkered down and went through essential needs three levels deep and figured out what that internal client needed. And then a second point, I'll just add quickly because I've gone on a bit here. But the second point is there are basic financial measures. I'm not going to get complicated. I wouldn't suggest getting complicated. Most people look at financial measures. They look at measurement measures in process. But you know what they often don't do? They don't look at the very most fundamental measures on financial statements that the government cares about, that the CEO gets paid for. There are only six categories on financial statements that every single company in the world has to create that are really paid attention to by CEOs of a potential customer. And so if we can dig into those basics and connect the, the current metrics with, oh, we benefit that for their business. Now we've got, we're benefiting human beings, we're benefiting organizations, and all of a sudden things get unstuck and we know a path to chase. So that's the most important thing is get deeper into the mind of the customer, find yourself doing it alone, find yourself doing it with your team, find yourself doing it with the customers or the prospects themselves and, and hunker down and find yourself looking deeper into their minds. That's the first thing that you should, you should do and the place you should find yourself. Does that make sense? A absolutely. Um, we, we call this our deep thinking process times or deep, deep think, deep thought, deep thoughts, deep thinking. And we it do sounds that. It's fluffy. No one, you know, people are just like, ah, I don't need to do that. I just got to get busy. I will say probably 95% of my ideas um, that I come up with, not my team, but 95% of the ideas that I come up with come, come out of those uh, times of solitude where you're right. Um, I turn off my device. Uh, I may I may open my window and open up the uh, window so I can hear the birds and stuff like that. But other than that, uh, it's been incredible because what, what, what usually happens is I just start a brain dump. And then by the time I'm ended up, I'm like, how did I start with this? And I'm here. <laughs> this is great. Like, it just, I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain, but it, I think it works like a champ. Yeah. And, and I'll just say this to close that piece of it. And that is that, um, people think they already do this. Oh, I know we, we do surveys for customers. I already know this. You're not telling me anything new. That's why I've been very specific. Have you found yourself efforting? Because thinking is work, literal work, takes literal electricity in your brain. Have you literally got alone or with your team or with a client and gone deep and dug deep into all three levels of human need? I'm intrigued. I want to know what the 12 needs are and the six essential types of numbers are. Yeah, you can... It's that would be laborious and it would kill everyone, but I gave them away free on my site. I'll uh, right after this call, I'll make sure that I do have an up because I'm my webmaster. So um, <laughs> I'll make sure that they're available. And in fact, you know what I can do to make it really easy? I will, um, I, if anyone emails me, I'll send them personally to them at mark at boldbreakthroughs.tv. Or if they want to go look at my site, I'll, I'll hurry. And out. I did capitalize the TV there at the end just to. Yeah, it's not uh, .com. That'll go to someone else. I'm sure they're nice people, but not me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll make sure that they're on my site. Um, they're, they're usually not for free. And I'll make sure that I have them linked easily and they're free and such. And would, where, would, where would people go to learn more about you? 
my full name, because like you said, there's a lot of Mark Cooks in the world. I'm not trying to sound important. It's just Google Mark Cook and you'll find 800 of us. Uh, so it's MarkSpencerCook.com, MarkSpencerCook.com. Yeah, yeah that's is. awesome. So, so uh, and it's on this, this screen there where they can go and learn all about what you're doing and what you have yeah. going on. And yeah. And uh, it's, it's, there's a link to my podcast it. there. There it is. Yeah. So if you go down, you'll see there's my, there's my podcast uh, coming up. Look I'm going to share that the inventor of GPS. Awesome. There it is. The Rose Coach Bowl. Whittingham. There's two of those. Wow. So, you know, I, I was a rookie podcaster on the first one. I'm, people think I talk too much. I do. You know, I tried to anyway, <laughs> but uh, I interviewed him and uh, he was, he was spectacular, spectacular. Wow. First one. And this one is, this one that you're looking at is a bunch of people that played for him. Uh, I, I've got to say uh, about this, you know, it's a worthy tangent. I know we only have a few minutes probably left, but um, he gets paid several million, like you know, all those coaches that are successful. He gets paid several million dollars a year to coach 200 millennials. He, could be a CEO of a, of a huge company. He knows mm -hmm. process. He knows how to get things done. He knows to get through bottlenecks. And uh, it, why would he go be a CEO? It's kind of like saying, couldn't LeBron James play tight end? Well, well why would he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he has an amazing job. It's intense. It's a lot of hours, but he loves it. And, and he knows how to lead millennials. Those are worth checking out. Anyway, you can go to that site. It's got a link, Gus. Uh, a, a couple in and i'll make sure i get a, a, a link to those 12 but you can also email me and uh let me know um sure this, know. Uh, do you have time for a second i'd be glad to give you a couple more i'll make, be a little shorter absolutely absolutely let's 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 do this if, if, you, if you're okay with it, it. Uh, and i'll try to i'll try to cut it shorter so uh, I just I just get really passionate, as you can tell, that people actually do these things because I have seen when people do them, they get results. And the way I work is you pay me a check and you get it ready when I come. And if we do it on Zoom, it's the same thing that if I don't find with your group 10 times that amount doing these things, I don't take the check. So I'm very confident they work. And that's why I have so dang much passion that people do them. Because thinking about them or thinking they're inspiring does nothing, nothing at all. Uh, so you need to do these things. The second thing uh, that I'd like to, to share, and hopefully they can take on themselves, and if not, I'm willing to help. But the, the second place they need to find themselves after they've, they've got that thinking done, it, put, it sets them up to literally go to the spaces of the clients. And uh, most people that work in a company have never seen these spaces, but even the salespeople, even the customer facing people have been there for a different reason, because what I'm asking you to do is get in the space where they buy and when they use what you do. And that might be a computer screen and it might be analytics that way, but you have to see it for yourself. You can't, you can't just look at data and think you have a sense because Half of the learning of this second place we're going to visit is going to come in the form of emotional passion within yourself that will then emanate in your actions and in your leadership. But only half, the other half is intellectual. You will learn new things. Go to the spaces where your customers buy and where your customers use. And if you can't have access to those and you're not someone that, that your boss will fly you somewhere. You go to a competitor or the closest alternative to it, and you go where their customers buy and use what's happening. And you step back and you look through a different lens, not through selling, not through all the things you usually do, not delivery, not being responsible for something. You step back and you look through the lens of improvement. Mm. What's going on here that's bad? It's a problem. What's going on here that's amazing? And what is boring in the middle that shouldn't be? And if you step back and you look through that lens and you're looking for those three, there's three different places. We don't have time to talk through them all, but there's three different vantages in those spaces that have to be studied. 
And I, I say you do the job of a photojournalist, and it's not a metaphor. We've interviewed a lot of photojournalists. I've interviewed Steve McCurry, arguably the best photojournalist ever. And serious product development people do user studies. They do ethnography. P&G pays a million dollars every time they study a product potential. So they, people are going with cameras, taking pictures, taking video, because you don't notice everything immediately. Even mm -hmm. if you're in the bold encounter, in the space, you'll notice tons. You'll, it'll blow your mind. It's by far statistically the biggest impact thing I could talk you into. I think because it's so unusual, normal employees, normal leaders think they've already done it, don't want to do this. But when I get them to do it, they can increase results 1200 percent with this thing. So what I what I say is get to the space where they buy and they use the thing that you do is take pictures of everything you see as far as the place goes. Take pictures of everything you see as far as the people go and how they're interacting with each other. And then take pictures and notes, because I'll, sometimes you don't catch these, of the emotions as you visit those places and hear people talk where they talk to you. They give you clues by saying, oh, that's really hard. Or, oh, I love that. And they give you these clues and you capture those. And then you bring them back. And because you've been a photojournalist, you get to share them with a lot of team members and your brain gets to catch up with yourself and you see them again. You're like, oh, I know what we need to do. And you've studied in a bold encounter your customers now so much deeper in a second, entirely different way. And you feel it. When you see something that should be better, you suddenly say that has to happen. And your passion to get it done just is exponential. So that's the second thing. I think the third thing, and then I'll, I'll turn the time back over to you, is you really need to find yourself in a new conversation. Uh, you need to find literally in proximity, either over Zoom, over the phone, or in person, in real time, not text, not email, not LinkedIn, but you need to have a human conversation with a new contact, a new type of expert. And what I would suggest, based on my research, is someone that I call an adjacent expert. This is someone that's, if your box of what you do is, is right here, it's someone just outside of what you do, serving the same market that you do. There are a host of vendors that are trying to sell to that same target market. And if you are broadening and having conversations, what do you guys do? How do you serve them? What are you finding that works best? And you're broadening your networking, not in your current ecosystem of vendors that are partners, but always broadening, finding three to seven new experts to have conversations. I call them information interview. That's what I'm asking you to do. So on the first one, you're going to some solitude. You're racking your own brain. You should come up with about 30 plus ideas. Then the second place you're going to go is the literal place your customers are served and sold. And you're racking your brain for improvement. They're taking pictures. And you should easily, easily come up with 30, 35 new possibilities for improvement. And by the time you do this third one, where you're asking a new type of vendor that also serves those type of people, and you're asking three to seven of those, you're, you're at 35 plus ideas. And by the end of these first three, you have a pile of a hundred ideas, a hundred possibilities to create a breakthrough in that bottleneck. And do you want to execute all those? No, because I don't call that rapid innovation. I call it a train wreck. <laughs> I'm trying to execute on 100. So you want to converge at that point. We've oriented. We've ideated. Now we're going to converge. We're going to dig through the pile. There's a pile of 100. And we dig through the, the 100 possibilities and we find two, just two. We simplify our list of 100. We look for new things than 100. And then we go down to two. And there's some criteria that help do that, but but they can feel it because they know their business. They could do this themselves and they can they could converge on two that are synergistic, that are the most important changes, and don't do anything else until those are amazing in the client's eyes. That's what I would suggest you do to create a bottleneck breakthrough for, for from my standpoint. 
Does that make sense? You, you're in it, the business. It, are you believing? Am I getting you? Yes, I am digging everything that you're saying. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm thinking about it too, as you're talking, um, I don't want to say selfishly, maybe selflessly, but, uh, uh, well, may I may, you know what? I'll take it. I'll take this one. I'll, I'll say it's a little bit selfish because I was thinking, okay, and what am I doing? Where am I falling short from these recommendations? And I can do more. I can do more. And uh, I may not have gotten a hundred new ideas, but I probably got 20 or 30 and I boiled those down. We're down to one now and we're acting on that. That's and awesome. it came from a friend of mine who's in a similar industry um, yeah. doing something, same kind of clientele, but a much higher level. Uh, and and when I say higher level, I'm just talking about different industries. Uh, and uh, and I thought, wow, what a great idea. We met with my team this week. First thing we talked about, we have an action plan. We're ready to go. That's rolling out in April. And so um, I just want to say from a real-time execution, on my end, I did something very similar to that, and it worked. And we're yeah. already taking action. And I oh, learned about hey, this hey, idea hey. two Absolutely. weeks ago. It's so great. It's so great. Congratulations. It, these things that, you know, I've been uh, really fortunate to be able to research the nuances and experience them for, firsthand with thousands. For, I, I've done this with 4,000 people, and I've, I believe I've helped everyone at least a little bit. But I, I got to tell you, the, these things have some finesse. Um, we're not talking about simple brainstorming or anything like that. It's They take a little finesse. And if they need my help, I want to come. And, and, you know, you hear this, you hear somebody guarantees it's impossible to like say guarantee and have people believe it. But I don't think that they probably have heard this guarantee. Here, here's the thing. When I, when I see a client that I want, I offer them an extra incentive. I say, listen, you bring your check of X amount and I'll bring, I'll bring my own check to you for a thousand bucks. One of us leaves with both the checks. So if you, if, if you have your people or you personally do these five things with me and I help you do them, I'm bringing a check for a thousand bucks because you're going to get 10 X the value. I have no Hesitation, it's never not happened. It, these, these are well-researched, proven, simple things. And, and we really come down to a very particular way to get ideas out of your own mind, to get mm. ideas from the world and the thing, the world of the things, and to get ideas from new people that we haven't talked to. Those are the only places, unless you believe in God like I do, that you can even get ideas. So uh, it's just the particulars of how you go to those places and what you do to get those breakthrough ideas. And I, I bet on it when I want to. So anyway. Well, thank you, Mark S. Cook. <laughs> 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 I really, I really, uh, I really appreciate it. Mark Spencer Cook. Um, yeah, this is uh, something that I think a lot of people need rapid innovation. Yeah. Um, and one of our biggest challenges, I think, in my opinion, is when you get when you get stuck is how do you get unstuck? And, and we just talked about it for the last hour um, on the, go to a place of isolation. Um, yeah. And you know, let me give you a warning, though, before you march through them, because it's, I think it's really important that, that uh, they get a warning. It's it's I, I leave this till the end so they hear it for sure. Don't do these things on normal work. They're not for normal work. You know, when it, when an IBM sales call, when an IBM salesperson calls you and you have to return a call that you're not interested in, should you should you add these five tasks to your workflow? No. That's a good there, point. There's plenty of work that doesn't deserve to be your very top priority. What I've described is only for the top priority, that top bottleneck or that top breakthrough that deserves to happen for results and clients. So it's just for the top, just the number one. Yeah. A good case in point for us is, is growth and, and breaking that down. Like that's a big priority for us. And, uh, and, and that's what we did. We had to come up with all these different ideas and really do what, you know, it took us 10 months to build our system, 10 months. That's to build our system. Very scary. Yeah, that's hard. Um, 
and your and, size, it's hard. It's great for a big multi-billion dollar company. So happy that it's done. We're so it's not done. It's all it's gonna be ongoing. But you know, we took the time, we slowed down so that we're able to speed up. And now we're confident we have we have the we're in a position to where we can scale quicker and faster, but the ideas still keep coming. They still keep coming in there. So thank you for exactly. sharing what, what you shared. I, I, so many people need this. So many people need this. So I will say, uh, Mark Spencer Cook, host of Bold Breakthroughs. Um, is that so? Is that on? Uh, is it? Where can they listen to your show? Uh, I am begging them to go to YouTube because YouTube is so hard to get new users for, as you know, probably. Please go subscribe. Please, 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 please go subscribe. Just look up Mark Spencer Cook on YouTube or Mark Spencer Cook Bold Breakthroughs. There's another one out there. You you know who I am, so you'll get to the right one. But go to go there and subscribe and enjoy because there are other people. I barely talk on a lot of them. Uh, it's mostly like you say the other people and I steer them into these topics and, and it's the inventor of the cell phone. It's the coming up as the inventor of GPS. I have an $8 billion CEO that tells you how to lead a company. And it's a great dissertation on that one hour of your strategy and your structure and your process for getting results. There's a lot of great stuff there. I really think, I think they'll enjoy it. And then if they want to do a podcast, you know, at some point, um, they, they, it's right now they can go on Apple and, and Spotify and all the major podcast providers, but there it is. Yeah. But I'm begging you go click that subscribe button. I need to get from 87 to a thousand. I've only been doing this a few weeks, but I've got 11 <laughs> episodes, a lot of interviews and I need, I need subscribers bad. Well, I just subscribed. You got one more. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap? I, yeah, I just want to thank anyone who's listened. If it's one person or 20,000 like you suspected, uh, you know, I told you that I caught the bug when I was young. Um, just people willing to listen because I don't bring you my ideas. I bring you s some some really well-researched ideas of much smarter people than I am. And uh, it's just my calling in life. And I'm so grateful that anyone would listen to any of it I, I just want to thank you for being here and listening to jamie and his podcast and his video cast and 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 to anything i said i just really am grateful really well thank you very much uh mark yeah it's been uh it's been a pleasure getting to know you a little bit here and and thank you for sharing your wisdom with us and uh is there any chance you can hold on just for a second while i go yeah. ahead and wrap up yeah okay let me wrap up wrap up really quick here uh, I, I, wow. <laughs> uh, I've been talking to Mark Spencer Cook. He's the host of Bold Breakthroughs. Go learn more about him at markspencercook.com. You can send him an email, mark at boldbreakthroughs.tv. Uh, make sure you put TV in there. Otherwise, it's going to go somewhere else. I don't know. Uh, you can also follow him on, on LinkedIn um, and subscribe to him on uh, YouTube. You can go when you search in YouTube, just go to YouTube and type in Mark Spencer Cook Bold Breakthroughs and he'll pop right up. Click on it, subscribe and uh, listen to some of the interviews he has there. I'm going to go listen to the one that he had with uh coach from utah that's going to be pretty oh, you're going to love it you're going to love it uh, hey, all of my social media is just mark spencer cook with no space so however oh, you want to get a hold of me perfect go to the web mark spencer cook go to youtube mark spencer cook go to go to uh, any social media with mark spencer cook you're, you're gonna find me. there's a lot of mark cooks but there's only one mark there's spencer. only one baby <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just want to wrap up really quick, say thank you so much to everybody that joined us today. If you're watching this um, and evergreen at another time and you have some questions for Mark, please leave a comment. I will make sure to get those to Mark or simply take our cues from this uh, instructions here on this video and uh, you'll be uh, able to contact them however you want to. Um, if you want to learn uh, how you can break through the bottleneck in your business today, you can also in tandem right after you subscribe to Mark Spencer Cook's <laughs> show, you can go to bottleneck.online slash BTV and learn more about this program here. And uh, for all of those of you out there that have been 
uh, super excited, but have not yet purchased or gone to learn more about my new book, go to quitrepeatingyourself.com, how today's leaders are using systems and processes to grow their business the right way. I've had a lot of fun with that launch. It's been going, it's been a blast. And I'm uh, really happy to say that this teamsees.org uh, launch is now final as of midnight, January 1st. Uh, everybody that got together, uh, there's millions and millions and millions of people that got together on this. And they, their goal in less than three months was to raise $30 million to clean up 30 million pounds of trash from our ocean rivers and beaches. They reached the goal. They reached the $30 million. So they gave a dollar for every pound of trash. Um, for every dollar you gave, a pound of trash was picked up. We did reach the target of $30 million. So thank you very much. You can still go learn more by going to teamseas.org. Uh, this will be the last time that I'm showing this as this is going off, but it's not the end of my passion for cleaning up the oceans through our rivers and beaches and all of that. Big passion of mine. And thanks to everybody that participated in that. That was a blast. If you missed the last episode, we talked with the one and only Scott Drake, founder of Jump Coach. We talked about delegating tasks versus delegating problems. That was a wonderful conversation. Uh, coming up next week, I'm going to be talking with David Schreiner Khan, and we're going to be talking about community development. So hope you join us then. It's Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, uh, one more thing I want to remind you, and I might be able to show you right here, create your own ripple. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great one. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. And if you enjoyed it, please share this episode with a friend that needs a breakthrough. Post this on social media and add my website or tag my YouTube page. Or just text markspencercook.com to a friend or message that link on Instagram right now. Also, make sure to subscribe on my site at markspencercook.com to stay up to date on all the latest advice on how to unstick priorities to create breakthroughs. I'm so grateful that you listened today. And remember, you have people rooting for you. They love you and want you to make your breakthrough. That includes us too. Take the first step. Now, you know what time it is. It's time to go create a breakthrough for your work in life. And we'll see you there.